This is our Honors 2 Unit 7B review. We start with our angles in standard position. So we need to find two angles, one positive, one negative, that are coterminal with 150 degrees. So whenever we see this, we want to add 360 and subtract 360 from the angle we're looking for to get coterminal angles. Because 360 is a full revolution around the unit circle, this takes us back to the same spot, but we would have a different number of revolutions or a different path to get there. So one of them, the ones we get is 510 degrees. The other would be negative 210. So that's the positive coterminal, negative coterminal, both work for 150 degrees. Next, we need to draw theta in standard position and give the reference angle for 352. Now, 352 is going to go around almost complete one revolution, but then it stops short of that. So that means theta prime, our reference angle, would be 8 degrees because it's 8 degrees short of completing the revolution. And then when you close the triangle, this angle right here is 8 degrees. Same thing now for negative 672. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 720 to that because 720 is two revolutions, and it's gonna end at the same spot, but it gives me a little bit nicer value to work with. When I add 720 to negative 672, I get 48 degrees. Now, 48 degrees is in quadrant one, and it would be this angle right here. So theta prime is 48 degrees. Moving on, we need to find cosine of 45 degrees. Whenever we have a 45, 45, 90, it's 1, 1, root 2 is our sides. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be 1 over root 2. But we need to rationalize that and make it root 2 over 2. For sine of 60, if we have a 60 degree angle, it goes root 3 is opposite to 60, 1 is the short leg, 2 is the hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so opposite to the 60 is a root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. For tangent of 30, we're going to take the same triangle here. We have 1, root 3, and 2. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be opposite to the 30 is 1, adjacent is root 3. We're going to rationalize that and we get root 3 over 3 as our answer. Now what we also reference as we use the unit circle are all of these coordinates in quadrant 1. For quadrant 1 our angles are 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90. Now our coordinates, this is 0, 1, and 1, 0 because it's on the axes. To find these values, let's actually look up with what we did up here. So if I had a 30 degree angle, the 30 degree angle, I went over root 3 uh, in the x direction, but I, I want to have to also do the hypotenuse. So this is actually the cosine is x value. So it's going to be root 3 over 2. And then I went up the sine value, which would be 1 half. For a 45, 45, 90, it's going to be the 1 and 1. Our cosine is root 2 over 2. And sine is the same, root 2 over 2. For the 60 degrees, it is the same coordinates, just switched. So that's 1 half and then root 3 over 2. Now we need to give the coordinate of the unit circle that corresponds to 300 degrees. 300 degrees is in quadrant 4, and that is a 60 degree reference angle. Opposite the 60 is root 3, 1 is the adjacent, and 2 is the hypotenuse. But because that is in quadrant 4, the y value is negative. So now when we want to find the coordinate, which is x, y, we remember that cosine is x and sine is y. So cosine is 1 half and sine is negative root 3 over 2. We could also relate this back to being a reference angle. The reference angle at 300 degrees is 60. So it matches what we had here. It's just reflected down to quadrant 4, so that's why the y value changes, because it's below the x-axis. Now for 7 pi over 6, this is going to be in quadrant 3, because it's 1 pi over 6 more than 1, because 6 pi over 6 would be pi. Uh, with the 6, we know that's a 30 degree angle, so I go 1, root 3, and 2. Root 3 is negative and 1 is negative. 
so I need my coordinate, which is cosine and sine for x and y. Cosine is negative root 3 over 2. And sine is negative 1 half. This being the same as using the 30 degree in quadrant 1, they're just both negative because I've rotated down to quadrant 3. Sine of 315. 315 is in quadrant 4. It's a 45 degree angle because 45 degrees to 315 would get me to 360. Whenever I have a 45, 45, 90, it's 1, 1, root 2. And in this case, the y is negative. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's negative 1 over root 2, which we change to be negative root 2 over 2. Now we need to find all six trig functions. So if I know cosine of b is square root of 39 over 8, that means I automatically know secant of b is its reciprocal, which is 8 over the square root of 39 or 8 root 39 over 8, or not the 8, 39. But before we go further, let's find the, the triangle we're looking at. So if cosine is square root of 39 over 8, I need to find this side. Now with Pythagorean theorem, let's just put an x here for, to hold the value. I have 8 squared equals square root of 39 squared plus x squared or 64 equals 39 plus x squared. If I subtract 39 from 64, I get 25 equals x squared, or x equals 5. So that's this side here. Now I can use this to find my other ratios. So sine of, what is it, b? Let's write a b there instead of theta. Sine of b is going to be 5 over 8, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosecant is going to be the reciprocal, 8 over 5. Tangent is 5 over root 39, which is 5 root 39 over 39. And cotangent is its reciprocal, which is square root of 39 over 5. So the same thing now for uh, tangent of A. If that's 4 fifths, so let's put an A there, that's 4 is to 5, opposite to adjacent. Now, Pythagorean theorem, I would have 16 and 25. This would be square root of 41. Let's get the ones we know for sure. Tangent of A is 4 fifths, so that means cotangent of A is 5 fourths, reciprocal. Sine of A is going to be 4 over 41, or root 41 which is 4 root 41 over 41. Cosecant of A is the square root of 41 over 4. Cosine of A is adjacent over hypotenuse, or 5 over root 41, which is 5 root 41 over 41. And secant of A is its reciprocal, which is root 41 over 5. Okay, moving on. Now we have cosecant of 180. 180 is over here. I'm not going to draw the triangle. I'm going to write the coordinate of that. That's negative 1, 0, because I went negative 1 in the x direction. Also, I know that cosecant is 1 over sine. It's its reciprocal. And since sine is the y value, it's 1 over y. The y value here is 0, so it's 1 over 0, which is undefined, because we cannot divide by zero until we count for this. Now, secant of negative 150. Got to be careful here because it's negative 150. We're going in the negative direction, but we don't quite reach negative 180. So we're this triangle, which is a 30 degree reference angle. So we got one root three and two with both the x and y directions being negative. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine and cosine is opposite or adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. And if we look, that's going to be 2 over negative root 3, which we rationalize and get negative 2 root 3 over 3. Next, we move on to radians. So we need to draw 8 pi over 7 radians in standard position. 
Now, if it was 7 pi over 7, I know that would be here at pi. So this is 1 7th past it. So we could put it right about here. We know it's in quadrant 3, a little bit closer to the x-axis than the y-axis. 4 radians in standard position. Now, this is where we need to approximate a little bit more. Now, we have to remember this is in terms of pi. So this is pi radians, which is about 3.14. And since I've gone four of them, I know I'm going to go past pi. Well, this is 2 pi, which is 6.28 approximately. So we're going to say it's about right there. Now, if you're not sure about that, you could always do 4 times 180 over pi, which gives you 720 over pi, which is dividing 720 by about 3. And this is a very very approximate about. Uh, but divide 720 by 3 and that's about 240 degrees. So that would put us down here in that third quadrant and that's really enough to get the idea. So it's very big approximation but we just need a general idea of where what quadrant that shows up in. Now find two angles in radians that are coterminal to 3 pi over 10. This is where we need to be careful because a lot of times students want to turn these into degrees and identify the degree measure as coterminal. And that's not the case. It's just it took a different path to get to 3 pi over 10. What we need to do is add 2 pi to this. But if I'm going to add 2 pi, I have to add fractions the correct way. So that gives me 3 pi over 10 plus 20 pi over 10 because that's what 2 pi over 10 is with a common denominator. So we get 23 pi over 10. Now for the negative coterminal, I'm going to take 3 pi over 10 and subtract 20 pi over 10. Then I get negative 17 pi over 10 as my coterminal angle. Convert 235 to radians, so we're going to go 235 times pi over 180. Now that gives me 235 pi over 180. It looks like I can divide both of them by 5. 235 divided by 5 is, we could do 4 there, which gives us 20. We're left with 35, that's 47. And then 180 divided by pi, or 180 divided by 5 is uh, 36. So then I'm left with 47 pi over 36, and that is exact enough for what we need. Um, we can't simplify that any further. Negative 330 degrees to radians. So we're going to negative 330 times pi over 180. I get negative 330 pi over 180. I can make that into negative 33 pi over 18 just by dividing both by 10, and then I can divide both by 3, and it comes out to be negative 11 over 6. 11, negative 11 pi over 6. To convert 2 pi over 3 to degrees, I'm going to take the reciprocal of what I used right here, which is 180 over pi. Now that simplifies, so the pi is gone. I can also take 3 and 180 and divide both by 3. We're left with 60. So it comes out to be 120 degrees. Negative 3 pi over 5 times 180 over pi to convert to degrees. Again, I can divide with both top and bottom by pi to simplify that out. 5 and 180, 180 divided by 5 is 36. So I'm left with negative 3 times 36, which should be negative 108 degrees. Uh, for H, true or false, 2.3 radians is in quadrant 3. Now, like we said up there on number 4, not 4, B here, where I had to do 4 radians, let's use what we know. If I know this is pi, and this is about 3.14, 2.3 is going to be short of that, so it's going to be in quadrant 2, so we, it's enough for us to approximate, again, very loose approximation, to say that is false because it's going to be in quadrant 2 because it's less than pi, with pi being approximately 3.14. Next, sign of pi, negative pi over 2. So negative pi over 2 is on the y-axis, and that's a coordinate of 0, negative 1. We said earlier that sine is the y-value, and since it's negative 1, our answer is negative 1. Cosecant of pi over 2. Now we're at 0, positive 1. 
cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so it's still it's going to be the one over the y value. So cosecant of pi over two is going to be one over one or one. Now we need to evaluate our trig function, so that's all of them, if theta is negative 17 pi over 6. Now I'm going to find the coterminal angle to make this a little bit nicer. So I can add 2 pi to this, which is 12 pi over 6. If I do that, it's now negative 5 pi over 6. If I do it again, it's now 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 I can work with, because 7 pi over 6 is in quadrant 3. This is 30 degrees as the reference angle, so I have 1, 2, root 3, with x and y both being negative. So my ratios, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or negative 1 half, which makes cosecant its reciprocal of negative 2. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is negative 3 over 2, negative root 3 over 2. Let's try that again which means secant, its reciprocal, is going to be negative 2 over root 3, or negative 2 root 3 over 3. Tangent is negative 1 over negative root 3, which becomes a positive root 3 over 3. And cotangent is going to be negative root 3 over negative 1, or positive root 3. Now when we have 15 pi over 4, we're also going to find the coterminal to that. So let's subtract 8 pi over 4 from that, and we get 7 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 4, with 1, 1, and root 2, the y values being negative. So now we can say that sine of theta is negative 1 over root 2, or negative root 2 over 2. Cosecant of theta is the reciprocal. I'm just going to take the reciprocal of this one, and that's going to be negative root 2. Uh, cosine theta is 1 over root 2, which is the positive root 2 over 2. Secant theta is the reciprocal of 1 over root 2, which will be just root 2. Tangent theta is negative 1, and cotangent theta is also negative 1, because it just uses opposite and adjacent. Now for negative 4 pi over 3, let's add a 6 pi over 3 to that, and we get 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3, we have a 60 degree reference angle. Uh, we're going to go root 3, 2, and 1, with the 1 being negative. So we're going to have sine theta equals root 3 over 2. Cosecant is the reciprocal of that, which is 2 over root 3 or 2 root 3 over 2. Cosine theta is negative 1 half. Secant theta, reciprocal of that is negative 2. Tangent theta is root 3 over negative 1, which is just negative root 3. Cotangent theta will be a reciprocal of negative root 3, which would be negative 1 over root 3, or negative root 3 over 3. For our next one, uh, we have negative 5 pi over 6. We're going to add 12 pi over 6 to that and get 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 is going to put us in quadrant 3 with a 30 degree angle. Then we're going to go negative 1 negative root 3 and 2. Now that actually looks very familiar from what we did up here on C, and these are also the exact same answers. So let me pull this paper up here and look at it. Since they have the same uh, coterminal angles, negative 17 pi over 6, negative 5 pi over 6, which is there, and then 7 pi over 6, all of these are going to work the same. So you can just copy those down to what we have. And that's what's nice about using the coterminal angle is it is we could then use that to help us simplify down and find the values we want. Now, last set here, we have to solve the equations. So cosine theta of um, root 3 over 2. 
So first off, we need to figure out where is cosine positive. Cosine is positive when x is positive. So those, that is these two quadrants. So once we have that, we can then say that cosine is root 3 over 2. And then I have 1 and negative 1 for that to complete it. Now what we need is the reference angle. The reference angle on both of these is 30 degrees. So the angle we're looking for is 30 degrees in quadrant 1. And then in quadrant 4, that's 330 degrees because it's 30 degrees short of 360. So that's 330 degrees. Now it also wants it in radians. So in radians, 30 degrees would be pi over 6. And then a pi over 6 short, or 30 degrees short of 2 pi, would be 11 pi over 6. And if you're not comfortable with the fact of converting from degrees to radians or using it here, remember, I could just take this and multiply it by pi over 180, and it does get me to the values that I want. But we just need to be careful. Sometimes it may ask for just degrees or just radians, and you're going to answer it in that correct format. For b, I'm going to say that sine theta plus 1 is going to become sine theta equals negative 1 by subtracting over. So now I need to think, when is sine negative 1? This is not going to be a, a special right triangle or 30, 45, or 60. This is actually saying, well, when is y equal to negative 1? That only occurs at the coordinate 0, negative 1, which is going to be 270 degrees or... 3 pi over 2. For our next one, c, it's two parts. It's factored down. I have a product, which is 0. So I'm going to say sine theta equals 0 and cotangent theta plus 1 equals 0. I'm going to solve them separately and get the solutions and put them together. So first off, when is sine 0? Well, y is 0 at 1, 0 and negative 1, 0. So for that, I'm going to have 0 degrees and 180 degrees. Cotangent, I got a little more to do. So we have cotangent theta equals negative 1. Cotangent is negative in quadrants 2 and 4. So this would be a 1, negative 1, or a 1, negative 1 there. Now this type of triangle is a 45, 45, 90. So it's 45 and 45. So let's just put them all together. From the original one, sine, I get 0, and 180. Then from cotangent, I get the 135, because that's 45 degrees short of 180. It's the 45 degree angle in quadrant 2. And then the 45 here is 315. Then we have to convert these to radians. Well, 0 in radians is 0. 180 in radians is pi. 135. Now 45 is fourths. So it's 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths. So 3 pi over 4. And then over here, in quadrant 4, that's going to be a 7 pi over 4. If those still do not click, remember you have the rule to convert for you. But there's our answers for C. Last one, D. Tangent squared theta minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to go tangent squared theta equals 1. Then when I take the square root of both sides, I make this plus or minus the square root of 1, which the square root of 1 is 1, and that's not the important part, it's that plus or minus, because we have to account for both the positive and negative solutions. So this is what we need to work with. Well, tangent is positive in quadrants 1 and 3. It's also negative in 2 and 4. So we're going to do the four triangles off of this. Tangents 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. And here's the nice thing. All of these angles are going to be the same. The reference angle. Then I'm going to take that reference angle and write my answers. When it's 1 and 1 and then root 2, it's a 45 degree angle. So it's the 45 degree angles going around the circle, which is 45, 135, 225, 315. Then in radians, it's pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4.